Senator from Ohio. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent for the quorum call to be dispensed with. Without objection. I thank you, Mr. President, and uh, I'm here to talk about the legislation that's before us. Uh, it has been before the Senate today and likely to be before the Senate tomorrow on economic development, but specifically to talk about, in the interest of promoting economic development and job creation, a couple of amendments that I plan to offer to help give American employers some relief from regulatory mandates that are stifling economic growth and job creation. I hear it all the time in Ohio, and I'm sure my colleagues hear it uh, in their states, which is employers saying that we'd like to expand and begin hiring again, but one of the concerns is that there's a regulation that affects us. Almost every business I meet with in Ohio, and I was in Ohio last week meeting with businesses in the area of energy, uh, both companies that produce energy and companies that use a lot of energy, including chemical companies and steel companies in Ohio, uh, all of them have stories about some of the regulatory burdens that are making it more difficult to get jobs back and to get our economy back on track. By all accounts, the regulatory burden on employers is growing. A recent study commissioned by the Small Business Administration estimates that the annual toll now of federal regulations on the American economy has reached $1.75 trillion. And by the way, $1.75 trillion is more than the IRS collects in federal income taxes. With the unemployment rate now at 9.1 percent and the unfortunate news we heard about last month's job numbers, uh, should be a wake-up call to us to focus on economic development and specifically uh, how do we get businesses to do more in terms of hiring and spend less on red tape, less on bureaucracy and reduce the regulatory burden in smart ways. The current administration has said some of the right things, but actually moved in the wrong direction. We've seen a sharp increase in the last couple of years in what uh, are deemed to be major or economically significant rules. That's defined as regulations that impose a cost on the economy of $100 million or more. According to the administration's Office of Management and Budget, the current administration has been regulating at a pace of 84 major rules per year, uh, which by way of comparison is about a 50 percent increase over the regulatory output during the Clinton administration, which had about 56 rules per year, and an increase from the Bush administration as well. So we've seen more regulations and more significant regulations. I was encouraged to hear President Obama's words when he talked about the executive order in January, uh, which is entitled Improving Regulation and Regulatory Review. But now we need to see action. We need to see it from the administration, from individual agencies, to provide real regulatory relief for job creators to be able to reduce this drag on the economy. One common sense step that we can take is to strengthen what's called the Unfunded Mandates Relief Act. It was uh, passed in 1995. It was bipartisan. Uh, I was a co-sponsor in the House of Representatives. It's an effort to require the federal regulators to evaluate the cost of rules, to look at the benefits and the costs, and to look at less costly alternatives uh, on rules. The two amendments that I'd like to offer over the next few days as we consider uh, the legislation before us would improve this Unfunded Mandates Reform Act, and it would reform it in ways that's entirely consistent with the principles that President Obama has laid out and committed to in his January executive order on regulatory review. The First Amendment would require agencies specifically to assess the potential effect of new regulations on job creation, so focusing in on jobs, and to consider market-based and non-governmental alternatives to regulation. Now, this would broaden the scope of the Unfunded Managed Relief Act to require cost-benefit analysis of rules that impose direct or indirect costs of $100 million a year or more. So again, this is for major rules of $100 million or more. It would also require agencies to adopt the least costly or least burdensome regulatory option that achieves whatever policy goals have been set out by the United States Congress. It seems to me it's a common sense amendment. Uh, I hope we'll get bipartisan support for it. The second amendment would extend UMRA, the Unfunded Mandates Relief Act, to so-called independent agencies, which today are actually exempt from the cost-benefit rules that govern all other agencies. Uh, in 1995, we had this debate and determined at that time we would not extend the legislation to independent agencies. In the interim time, independent agencies have been providing more and more rules, put out more and more regulations, and having a bigger and bigger impact. 
An example of an independent agency uh, would be the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, or the CFTC, uh, which is uh, the Commodities Future Trading Commission. These are entities that, although independent in the executive branch, uh, are very much involved in putting out major rules and regulations. It's sometimes called the headless fourth branch of government uh, because their rules are not reviewed for cost-benefit analysis, even by the OMB, the Office of Management and Budget, and its Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, so-called OIRA. We've looked at some of the GAO data and put together various studies, and it appears to us that there are about 200 regulations that were issued between 1996 until today that would be deemed to have an impact of $100 million or more on the economy, but were automatically excluded from the Unfunded Mandate Relief Act because they were deemed to be from independent agencies. So it's basically closing a loophole. And closing this independent agency loophole, I think, is a sensible reform. It's been endorsed by many people, including, interestingly, uh, the current OIRA administrator, the President's regulatory czar, uh, Cass Sunstein, who in a 2002 Law Review article talked about the fact that this was an area where UMRA ought to be extended because, there, again, so many independent agencies are putting out regulations that impact job creation in this country. No regulation, whatever its source, should be imposed on American employers or on state and local governments without serious consideration of the costs, the benefits, and the availability of a least burdensome alternative. Mr. President, both these amendments would move us further toward that sensible goal, and I would hope that the leadership would allow these amendments to be offered. I think they fit well with the underlying legislation. And if they are offered, I would certainly urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to support them.